Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about analytic functions. Oops. Uh, so analytic functions are, are a fairly straightforward thing They're, uh, in terms of their definition. So recall from the previous video we have the Cauchy-Riemann equations. Where if we have some function of a complex variable equal to u uh, plus i v, we find that um, Provided there are certain smoothness conditions that uh, ux it must be equal to vy uh, and uh, uy has to be equal to negative vx. All right, uh, plus uh, uh, smoothness of um, all partials. Of, of u. Um, of u and v. So we have to have smoothness of these, uh, of these uh, uh, derivatives right here. Okay, so then, then the implication goes both ways. Okay, so if, if this is true then, uh, we can say that f prime of z exists at a point z naught, uh, where here we're taking at some specific point that we're interested in, z naught. Okay, so uh, we actually define now an analytic function um, at z naught if um, f prime of z exists in some, in some neighborhood of z naught, and f prime itself exists at z naught. Okay, so it's a straightforward definition. If you're interested in a certain point z naught, find a small neighborhood around it, and if everywhere in that neighborhood f prime exists, it is analytic at the point z naught. Okay. So then we, we say that f is a analytic. Okay. All right. So that's the basic definition. Um, and uh, there's, there's, you know, not a whole lot in terms of, uh, uh, but we're going to, what we, uh, what we really want to do is understand, you know, what, what do we mean by this? What is the significance of being an analytic function? Um, so let's just go over, you know, a quick example first. Uh, f of z is equal to 1 over z. Okay, so if I take some, so say I'll take take z naught that's not equal to zero. Okay, so again, right at zero, we know that this doesn't have a derivative because it, the function itself is undefined at that point. So if I take some other point z naught away from zero, then of course I can draw some neighborhood around it. Even if I'm very, very, very close to zero, I can always draw some little neighborhood around the point. Even if I'm uh, very, very close, I can always find an open neighborhood around it. And in that case, then I find I can find the derivative quite simply. It's simply 1 over z uh, squared, uh, a negative 1 over z squared. So, uh, so yes, it's analytic at all points not equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, in general, we have another definition, uh, which is a, that of a, an entire function. What do I mean by an entire function? I mean it's analytic for all the complex plane. Okay. So for instance, this function f of z is equal to 1 over z is not an entire function because there is one point, i.e. z equals 0, right there, that where the function is not analytic, it's not defined, and in which case we can't say that the function is entire. Okay, but now of course we have other examples. Um, the function f of z is equal to z squared, that's an example, uh, and clearly f prime of z is equal to 2z using our standard uh, 
der derivative formulas in there, and so we say then that f is entire. Or so anyway, or you know, um, z squared is entire. Okay. All right. So um, uh, so just like uh, the rules for derivatives, if if f and g are if two functions are analytic. Uh, then, of course, f times g is, and I'll just say a, just to abbreviate. Um, it also implies that f uh, plus g is, um, is analytic as well. Um, of course, uh, then if, um, we could have other functions. So, uh, you know, c times f is a. Uh, where c is some complex number, some constant. And then there's also, we have to think about f over g is analytic only if g is not zero at the point that we're investigating. Okay. All right. And so I should put right in there at z naught, the point that we're uh, that we're interested in, in studying, um, and uh, so of course you can take other uh, analytic functions, and, and another classic one then would be f of g. Uh, if both functions are analytic at a point, um, at the points, uh, the relevant points, then of course we can always define our derivative. This could be our function, call it um, uh, h. So h prime is then going to be provided it's analytic at the appropriate points. So this will be analytic as well. All right, so it seems like we're just uh, creating a bunch of terminology, but it turns out it's going to be very important in the, in the future. So we want to just take some time to, to create this new nomenclature. Um, uh, so again, ways to check. I mean, so let's talk about, you know, how do we check Analyst, analyticity. Well, of course, uh, we could think about this function, right? So f of z is equal to z, uh, the modulus of z squared. So uh, recall that um, f prime of z in this particular case um, only exists at z equals zero. And note that um, now at the point z equals zero, I can draw a neighborhood around it. And it doesn't exist, the, the derivative itself doesn't exist in any neighborhood uh, I should say does not exist in any uh, neighborhood of zero. So what we say is f is not analytic. All right. So that's a there's a way we can check uh, for analysticity is just a, we always have to think of it in terms of neighborhoods. But there's other uh, now we can also check analyticity other ways. For instance, um, uh, we can use uh, so we can use so that's the first way is just uh, uh, using the idea of a neighborhood argument. Uh, another thing we can do is check. Uh, the cauchy riemann equations. So if we can write our function f of z is equal to u plus i v, where u and v are now functions of, of z, then I just use, uh, I check, uh, is ux equal to vy and uy equal to negative vx? So uh, we can, of course, do an example of that. Um, uh, and, and, and we'll uh, we'll check that in a second. So, um, and another way to check is to um, is to if f of z maybe isn't maybe we're not readily in that form, but rather is just uh, uh, is to use uh, differentiation rules. You know, like uh, the product power 
the power law, or the power, uh, the power rule. I should say I shouldn't call it law. Rule. Power rule, product, uh, chain rule, uh, quotient rule. And so on and so forth. Um, if 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 you can take these derivatives and and they're all defined at the point, then of course uh, uh, then the function is analytic, um, provided it's analytic in that neighborhood. Okay, so let's just go over some quick examples of this. Um, now let's try. So let's suppose uh, f is equal to u plus i v, and it and it's is analytic. So okay, then I want to I want to check is f bar analytic. Okay, well we can check that, right? So um, f bar is of course equal to u minus i v. All right. So let's take the let's take now let's use the the Cauchy Riemann equations. So we know. From up here, when we make that statement that f is analytic, that means that u x is equal to v y, and that u y is equal to negative v x. All right, so now we have to go and do the same thing here. u x has to be equal to negative uh, v, taking the partial derivative, so that becomes negative v y. But we already knew that was also equal to v y which implies then that vy has to be equal to zero because the only way for a, uh, a function or some number and itself and its negative to be equal is if that number itself is zero. And we can do the same thing uh, for, uh, for uh, the other of the other pair of cauchy riemann equations, uy is equal to negative, negative vx, and that's equal to vx which is equal to negative vx, so it also implies that vx um, must be equal to zero. All right, so, uh, and likewise, ux equals uy is also zero by the same argument. You can do the same uh, reverse. Uh, you can just simply, if this is equal to zero, then ux has to be equal to zero, and if vx is equal to zero, then uy has to equal zero because there's equal signs. Uh, in chaining all these together. All right, and so the, uh, that would imply then the only way for uh, f, f, uh, f bar, the conjugate of f, is only analytic if f itself is equal to a constant, which is precisely this statement. Okay. Um, all right, so that's the only way for f bar. So in general, f bar, the conjugate of f, is not analytic if f is uh, non-constant and analytic. So you take an analytic function, if you take its complex conjugate, if the analytic function itself is non-constant, then the conjugate of that function will not be analytic. Okay, so we see that, again, this, this notion of, uh, of, uh, of analytic, uh, it can be quite restrictive. Um, you know, subtle transformations uh, throw us off. All of a sudden, we don't have a differentiable function. Okay, um, uh, and... Uh, um, so, so there's an example um, of, a, of a function that uh, doesn't work. Um, of course, uh, we already knew then that uh, then this, of course, is equal to f times f bar. So is this analytic? Well, we already knew that z squared uh, is not differentiable. Uh, except 
at z equals zero. And clearly, uh, we also know that this is not an analytic function in general unless f is a constant. So, uh, uh, so this function is not analytic unless f is equal to a constant. Okay. All right. So, um, so that pretty much sums up uh, uh, just this definition and some of the ways we can use it. Uh, again, in our later videos, we'll talk about you know the significance of analytic functions, and that really will be actually the next video. So uh, we'll talk about the significance uh, of these analytic functions in the next video, and uh, finally tie together these things that we've been building up to for quite a while. So thank you very much.